The third memory I have is of Cindy Winter and Mary Jo Chapleski sitting at my bedside and saying things to me. I could not really grasp what they were saying, but I knew I was surrounded by love. And that seemed to make all the difference. So while it took quite a while for me to recover from that lovely experience, and it ended up um, requiring three neurosurgeries, NCFR members never stopped caring, never stopped checking in, never stopped asking how I was, never stopped, stopped being available to me. Um, I knew I was home before that. I knew I'd found my home, but I was the little flight in that home as a, as a result of that experience. All right. Well, what brought me here was my major professor. I think that's the way a lot of people like me in universities get to NCFR, and I had a major professor by the name of Dennis Orsner, mm -hmm. and he invited me to join the organization in 1977, and in, 1990, in 1978, I attended my first, my first NCFR. And uh, I've been coming every since, ever since. I think I might have missed two meetings at some point in time, but I think I've been a pretty loyal attendee. Early in my career, there was an NCFR conference, I believe it was in 1972, um, when, when we were, uh, when I was trying to identify, the, trying to kind of frame my professional identity. And we had a bus trip and that. We were in Portland, Oregon. And we were traveling, traveling on a bus, and I was trying to be, and I was getting job offers or opportunities to interview in sociology departments as well as in child and family departments. And I was very confused as to as to which way to go. And so fortunately, I got to sit on the bus next to Eleanor Lucky, who was a leading scholar at that time. She was trained in psychology. Ivan Nye, who was trained in, in, in sociology. And a couple of other people all sat on the bus together and kind of wrestled with me about, uh, about this issue. And as a, as a young professional, or as an evolved, maybe a, an entering professional, having these um, esteemed colleagues talk with me about the, the strengths and weaknesses of my alternatives and what I, would likely, what I would likely face if I went one direction versus another was a, an extremely memorable experience. And uh, I never forgot that. And it's one of those things that was so memorable that, of course, the organization to which they were attached and to which we were all attending at that time, you know, became a great, a great place for me. And I came back to the conference, and I went on the boat ride, and I saw only three other blacks on the boat ride. Uh, I continued to attend the conferences, and one of the blacks uh, talked with me and I had told her I was going to discontinue coming because it didn't pertain to high school and she encouraged me to not to discontinue coming because there would be other information that I could gain. So I continued to come and I met Beverly Johnson who was the family life teacher in the Chicago Public Schools and she and I drove to Minnesota. I rode with her to Minnesota and we continued to come. What really made me feel like I was welcome and it was a good organization for me was I went to my very first plenary session that was offered by Katherine Chilman and it was titled Healthy Adolescent Sexual Development, which was really a new way to look at adolescent sexuality. Everyone had taken a problem focus up until that time. And that was my main area of interest and focus. And so I really sat in a room full of thousands of people feeling as though she was speaking directly to me. And the NCFR conference allowed me the opportunity to actually approach her at, at that conference. And she listened to me. She wanted to hear about me and who I was. And she said to me, Karen, this is my last big hurrah, and I'm now passing you the torch. And so she, um, every year after that, she and I would get together at the conference, and she would ask me about my work and encourage me as I was pursuing healthy adolescent sexual development. And I think that's what makes NCFR a really special organization. Experience our leaders, I think 
you know, in, in the case, in the context of NCFR, Masaka, Dr. Masaka Shikunzu would be the person since um, she's the one who really supported us mm -hmm. um, or in the, the idea of the focus group, um, you know, from the very beginning. And when the focus group decided to uh, put out an issue on, um, a special issue on Asian American families, uh, you know, she was uh, volunteered to be the editor, the guest editor for that special issue, and uh, it's great because the special issue was, you know, went through and it was published in uh, in two thousand and ten um, in the Journal of uh, Family Issues.